My name is Karina Betker. Many of you may recognize me as the voice of Paimon. And joining me today is none other than Zach Aguilar. Greetings, everyone. I'm Zach Aguilar, and I voice the male traveler, Ether, in Genshin Impact. I am Albedo, chief alchemist of the Knights of Favonius. You carry the aura of the stars. Interesting. I would like to study you, if you do not mind. I'm certain we will have many opportunities to be alone in the future. Okay, our first character here is the alchemic master of Mondstadt, Albedo. He is a sword wielder and can manipulate the geo element. I really like his jacket, and I want one for myself. <laughs> yeah, same. Um, I don't know if you picked up on it or not, but during the 1.2 trailer at the beginning of the stream, it looks like he's really into sketching or art. Yeah, that's sort of like a unique aspect to add to his character. Maybe it's like his hobby or something. And I wonder if we're going to learn more about his connection with Sucrose, who is obviously another alchemist and that we have from Mondstadt. You could see her appearing a couple of times in the opening trailer, too. Okay, so now that we've seen our first new character in action, Let's take a moment to get a closer look on a skill set. Ooh, getting down to the nitty gritty. Absolutely. So, like I mentioned, Albedo is a Geo character, and he has a pretty unique skill set. When he casts his elemental skill, he summons something that looks like a flower called a Solar Isotoma. And when opponents within range of the Solar Isotoma are hit by an attack, the flower will then bloom into a transient blossom, dealing AoE Geo damage. Also, as you saw in the trailer, a character can stand in the center of the solar isotoma and it will lift them into the air. So you can basically use it like a platform. That is so cool. It's like an elevator. Oh my gosh, I'm definitely curious what those blossoms will do in combat. And it seems that his skill will also be really useful for a little boost to get to some of those hard to reach places while adventuring. <laughs> yeah, imagine using the platform to lift Klee into the air during battle. <laughs> She'd basically become a little turret that rains bombs down on the enemy. <laughs> 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 All right, so now let's check out Albedo's Elemental Burst, shall we? Uh, his Elemental Burst causes Geo Crystals to burst forth, and if Albedo's Solar Isotoma is already on the field, then Fatal Blossoms will be generated, which burst violently into bloom. Yes! More flowers! I like it! You know, flowers on Valentine's Day must be so easy for this guy! <laughs> No kidding. And speaking of flowers, let's move on to our next new character coming in version 1.2. It turns out that she also makes use of flowers. Yay, more flowers! Look how brightly lit the city is at night. Amazing. I wonder what it's like for all the people down there. Hmm? Um, no thanks. I think I'll pass on the night market. Sorry. All right. Our second character coming in version 1.2 is Ganyu, the secretary at Yuhai Pavilion. As you could see in her trailer, she's a bow wielder that can manipulate the cryo element. Yeah, her cryo style seems to be in line with the wintry theme we have going on in Dragon Spine. Also, did you see her outfit? I mean, all of the outfits in Genshin are amazing. So, of course, hers is amazing, too. <laughs> and are those horns I see on her head? Yeah, it, it seems she has red horns or... Maybe those are her ears? Ooh, that's an interesting aesthetic. Okay, now tell me more about her skills. I want to know more about these icy flowers that she has. Right, sure thing. So first we should point out that Ganyu has a very unique charged attack. As she charges her bow, Cryo will accumulate on her arrows, similar to how other archers also use the elements. However, Ganyu has different levels of charge, and the effects of her Cryo arrows will change the longer she charges her shots. Ooh. Oh, that's interesting. As for the flowers, Ganyu's elemental skill also places a flower on the ground like Albedo's, 
but her flower will attract opponents and then explode after a certain amount of time. How attractive are these flowers? So those poor hilly churros will be like, oh my gosh, hey look, there's a lovely flower over there on the ground. Apparently that's how hilly turtles sound. And then it just blows up in their face? That's so cold. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and unfortunately for them, things will only get colder from there. Because after unleashing her elemental burst, Ganyu will gracefully raise her hand in the air and summon ice shards that come raining down on her opponents. Oh my gosh, that sounds like it's gonna hurt! Okay, so it seems like she will be right at home in a cold place like Dragon Spine, and I, for one, certainly wouldn't want to get on her bad side. <laughs> yeah, me neither. So, both of our new characters look really awesome, but if our viewers would like to know more about either of these two particular characters, they should be sure to play through their story quests, which will be included in version 1.2. Oh, great! So we'll be getting new story quests for both of these characters as well? Yep, that's right. Both Albedo and Ganyu will have playable story quests. Awesome! I can't wait to play through those! I'm also really excited to see how everyone's story progresses in Dragon Spine as well. <laughs> After entering Dragon Spine, travelers will soon discover some mysterious crystal-like shards in different parts of the area. There are a total of three small shards waiting to be discovered, which seem to be completely sealed in ice. Well, nothing a couple hits from a trusty Claymore can't solve, right? Wrong! Your Claymore has no power here! Oh. <laughs> The ice around these shards cannot be simply broken by a weapon's might. Travelers will have to find another way to break through all the icy shells. Ah, puzzles. Okay, I like where this is going. Travelers should be sure to keep their eyes open as they traverse the pathways of Dragon Spine. There's even some special red ore scattered around that's never been seen outside the area. But remember, not all pathways are open in Dragon Spine. The path to the summit is completely impassable, blocked with a mysterious force that prevents you from going forward. <laughs> Just like Los Angeles traffic. Oh yeah, just like that. It's, it's absolutely exactly like that. <laughs> so, it sounds like finding the key to breaking these crystal shards might also be the key to unlocking the path to the summit? Interesting. I wonder what's at the top. There's gotta be something contained inside these shards, right? In fact, there is! As travelers break the shards, they'll discover the frost-bearing tree. This tree is no ordinary tree. It desires a substance called crimson agate. Travelers can collect more crimson agate to submit to the tree by gathering it in the wild or completing quests. Huh. I wonder why this tree needs crimson agate. Is that what keeps it alive or something? I mean, we'll see. The travelers can upgrade the tree and receive rewards by submitting more crimson agate. And these rewards will also include a new gadget that you might find particularly handy in Dragon Spine called a warming bottle. Ah, nice. Kind of sounds like a coffee thermos or something. Is it like something we can take to keep us warm on Dragon Spine? Precisely! And once the tree reaches level 10, the travelers can then receive blueprints for a new four star catalyst weapon, Frostbearer! Cool. I love the name. It feels like it fits in with everything that we've been talking about so far. Mm -hmm. Also, while exploring and fighting monsters in the Dragon Spine area, travelers might stumble across something that looks like a dragon tooth. But you should take note that this is no ordinary dragon tooth. I don't even know what an ordinary dragon tooth would look like. If you follow the quests and collect these dragon teeth along with some other items, you'll then use them in the camp to forge another four-star weapon called the Dragon Dragon Spine Spear. Oh, so that's two new four-star weapons we can get now. Right. And travelers will also receive the weapon's blueprint as well. So wait, you're basically saying that we'll be like the Tooth Fairies of Dragon Spine? But instead of exchanging teeth for coins, we get four-star weapons. <laughs> <laughs> basically, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this will be pretty fun. And more weapons is always a plus. For sure. Now let's take a closer look at what Albedo has been up to in the area. After Albedo's extended exploration of the Dragon Spine area, he has discovered some ancient ruins buried in the snow and ice. He's also found some script in the ruins, seemingly pointing him to the lost remains of a destroyed kingdom in Dragon Spine. So the history of Dragon Spine begins to unravel. There's a lot going on here despite the brutal environment. 
Traces of this kingdom are scattered all across Dragonspine, and there are even hidden quests. If travelers are able to uncover the secrets of these ruins, they'll receive a new four-star Claymore weapon, Snow Tomb Star Silver. Wow, so that's like three new four-star weapons already up for grabs. Dragonspine is loaded. You know it. All right, Zach, now that we've finished our first hike across Dragonspine, why don't we talk about some of the events coming for version 1.2? The Chalk Prince and the Dragon event will also feature a variety of different quests for travelers to complete with tons of different rewards. The Chalk Prince and the Dragon event will be divided up into four separate acts. Ah, I can see already that the Cursed Sword is going to play an important role in this event. Act 1 of the event will be unlocked as soon as you've completed Albedo's story quest, called the Princeps Cretaceous Chapter. Then each of the following acts will be gradually unlocked afterwards, each containing a variety of different quests and challenges to be completed. Seems straightforward enough. Now here's where the sword comes in. Once all of the single axe challenges have been completed, in addition to the axe completion rewards, travelers will also unlock a new ability for festering desire, the Cursed Sword. Ooh, so the abilities of the sword are literally growing, just like we saw earlier in the storyline. Exactly, but that's not all. After each event act is completed, travelers will also receive a corresponding type of essence, you know, in addition to all the other stuff we mentioned before. So what can we use that for? Oh, please say Prima Gems. Not exactly. Essence can be used in the event shop, and travelers can exchange it for whatever rewards pique their interests. But there's a key thing to remember here. What's that? All of the materials required for refining Festering Desire will also be available in the event shop. In other words, after completing all the event challenges, travelers will also complete Festering Desire. <laughs> nice. So if we count the three weapons we mentioned earlier, here we have all the weapons that will be available as rewards in version 1.2. Wow, and I was already excited about the weapons we saw earlier. So as we also briefly mentioned earlier, some of these weapons can be obtained directly, whereas others can be obtained indirectly via blueprints. That's a lot of new weapons. What else do you have for us, Karina? I feel like you're on a roll right now with all these rewards. Sure am! In version 1.2, the game will also be updated with two brand new sets of artifacts! The Cryo Artifact Set, Blizzard Strayer, as well as the Hydro Artifact Set, Heart of Depth. Everyone can check out the details in the descriptions here! Aw uh, yeah! I can see how these are going to be pretty awesome for the Cryo and Hydro characters we have so far. And I like how the names of these new sets match their corresponding effects. Good names just makes everything in the game come together. Mwah. Oh yeah! So to quickly summarize for everyone, both sets feature a corresponding elemental damage bonus for a two-piece set, which is awesome. And then the four-piece cryo set increases crit rate against opponents affected by cryo, whereas the four-piece hydro set increases normal and charged attack damage after using an elemental skill. I literally can't wait to get some of these for my characters. But the question is, which domain are these gonna drop in? Uh, wait, is there gonna be a domain in Dragonspine? Bingo! An all new domain called the Peak of Indignir will be available in the Dragonspine area, so don't forget to stop by and unlock the new domain while exploring the area. <laughs> if anything, I'll be stopping in there to save myself from sheer cold. <laughs> <laughs> And that's everything we have for the Dragon Spine event. But I'm sure you have other events waiting for us, right, Zach? Yeah, definitely. Tevat is a large world, and plenty of other things will also be happening across the lands in version 1.2. Let's start with an event for travelers looking for a real challenge the Hypostatic Symphony. Ooh, sounds musical. In the Hypostatic Symphony event, travelers will find themselves facing off with hypostases that have some special abilities compared to the ones that we typically encounter in the wild. Oh yeah, these hypostases seem pretty intense. <laughs> More importantly, travelers will be able to select the difficulty and conditions for the challenge. By choosing to take on a harder difficulty in more demanding conditions, travelers will have a chance at receiving more bountiful rewards. 
Okay, not quite the musical I imagined, but fighting hypostases is always fun. But if taking on hardcore challenges is not your style, we'll also have something a little more relaxing called Lost Riches. Wait, hold on. Did I just see, like, a Seelie following the Traveler? <laughs> a am I being replaced? <laughs> yeah, no, they, they would never do that. <laughs> 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 in this event, travelers will partner up with a little Seelie in search for treasure. I mean, I hope I'm not being replaced, but I do love the Seelies. I, they're really cute. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> no, you're not being replaced, but the little Seelies are really cute. Um, in this event, the Seelie will indicate whenever you are getting close to nearby treasure. After successfully locating the treasure, travelers will receive some special iron coins which can then be exchanged in the shop. Okay, that sounds really cool, but once we get the Seelie, do we get... To, I, I wish we could keep it. Do we get to keep it? Well, your wish has been granted. After collecting enough iron coins, you can exchange them to add the Seelie to your inventory. No way! Yup. Then you can just equip the Seelie and it will accompany you on all your future adventures. Aw, that's so awesome! If I get a Seelie, I don't think I will ever be able to play without it. <laughs> yeah, same. So travelers should remember that special areas will unlock when hunting for treasure. All you'll need to do is check the map to find each area's location. This'll definitely be a great event for exploring more of the game's open world as well. Okay, this might just be my favorite part of version 1.2 so far. <laughs> and last but not least, we have a returning favorite with a bit of a new spin. You might remember him by his unique sense of fashion and unorthodox business style. Wait, wait, <laughs> is it the crazy traveling merchant guy? <laughs> you got it. Ah, oh, yes, I love that guy. It's leaving. Yep, and he's back again. But this time around, he's going to be changing things up a bit. Oh, this should be interesting. So, for Marvelous Merchandise in version 1.2, travelers will now be able to find Lieben while visiting other players' worlds. Ooh! Everyone will have different rewards available at random from Lieben each day. So if you're interested in what Lieben is offering in someone else's world, you should be sure to pay him a visit there. Oh, that's an interesting twist! I can't wait to see what rewards he'll be trading for this time! Alright, and that's it event-wise. So, Karina, why don't you take us through some final features and optimizations travelers can expect to see in version 1.2? You got it! In addition to all the exciting new events and content we've introduced today, which has already been a lot, version 1.2 will also feature a variety of optimizations to improve the overall gameplay experience. Awesome! Let's hear some details. Improvements have been made to various features, including the in-game chat, the photo-taking system, domain drop collection, and character ascension. Sounds like they've made a lot of improvements to different parts of the game. Yup! So let's go through each of these improvements one by one and see what's waiting for us in 1.2. Okay, ready when you are. Travelers will be able to set custom names for their friends via the friend screen. Oh, nice. I'll finally be able to remember the names of the people I'm playing with. And Karina will be able to give her friends ugly nicknames. Hmm, you're so cheeky. You deserve an ugly nickname. <laughs> <laughs> there it is. Also, travelers will now be able to chat directly with their friends via the main game screen, even outside of co-op mode. Nice! So I'll be able to chat with my friends when I'm working on my single-player quests? That's right! Please don't spam me with messages, though. I can't promise anything. Alright, next we have a new gadget coming for version 1.2! Ooh! It's called the camera, with a K! Travelers can equip it to be able to snap photos at the press of a button. Also, the classic photo-taking system under the Paimon menu will support new options for character expressions, as well as improved camera movement features. So now it should be easier for travelers to capture all their favorite adventuring movements. Sweet. I can't wait to try that out on Dragonspine. Yeah, just be sure to not get frozen while posing in the cold, okay? Again, I can't promise anything. <laughs> <laughs> and next we have an improvement that travelers have already been requesting for some time now. Oh, goody. Starting in version 1.2, drop domain rewards like materials and artifacts will be directly added to your inventory. Nice. So we won't have to spend time picking up each of the dropped rewards anymore? Exactly. Everything will be automatically collected for 
for our travelers now. Oh, that is so much more convenient. Oh, I know, right? And our next improvement is also a convenient one for domains. After completing a domain, travelers may now directly choose to challenge that particular domain again. Yes, that'll also be a real time saver. And finally, we have a couple of important updates in 1.2 regarding character ascension. First off, travelers will now receive one acquaint fate each time they ascend their characters at level 20, level 50, and level 70. I'll never say no to more acquaint fate. Also, travelers will now be able to check any particular character's required ascension materials directly from the main character screen. Ah, so now it'll be easier to check which materials we need to start collecting. Precisely! This will be really handy whenever you get a new character and you have to keep checking which materials you need to look for. Great! I look forward to checking out all of these in-game. Yep, me too! So that does it for the optimizations that are coming in version 1.2.